All right, and uh, welcome back. Uh, I've got an exciting game for you today. Uh, it's not live. We're doing a post-game analysis. Uh, this is a game that I played a couple of days ago. Um, and as you can see, we have some uh, opponents here. Uh, it's me, who's just trying to learn this whole business about uh, standard four-player chess. You know, I'm not, uh, not that um, great at it. Just figuring it out, taking you guys along with me for the ride. Um, but I did notice that we had a couple of, uh, of uh, international masters. Eric Rosen, of course, a, a streamer and international master. Gotham Chess, uh, who I'd never heard of. Apparently, he plays a lot of four-player chess. Uh, not a lot, 192 games. Um, but plays some four-player chess here. Um, and I saw that they were playing. I, I was jumping into Eric's stream. I actually have some clips here that, as we're going through the game, I'll um, play so that you guys can see see what the the stream was doing for those moves. But I saw that they were playing. I uh, knew that they were joining a game because I saw it on screen, and I jumped in. I figured, you know, I'm not uh, the type of person. They were having issues with people taking advantage, you know, creating new accounts because they had limits on the rating, so they were jumping in and playing lower lower rated games, but they were actually higher rated opponents than the accounts showed. Um, I figured it was fair for me. Yes, I do have a lot of experience with variants, um, but I'm just as new to this uh, four-player standard um, as they are. So I figured uh, it was fair enough. I closed down the stream while I was playing against them as is good etiquette. So, um, yeah, I, I want to take you through this game and kind of explain what happened and what, uh, what the, my ideas were, what I was thinking as I was playing these moves. So, uh, we start off, Eric's playing as red. Uh, he's going for a Fianchetto setup. Blue, um, you know, giving access to the, the queen. I guess the, the thinking, the tr traditional thinking here is that the queen can come out and play, although in my recent games, not this game, but in my recent games, I've tried that strategy, and it always seems like no matter what I do, same as in two-player chess, if I bring my queen out early, um, it, it's just you spend so much time going, uh, getting chased around. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look into that, that strategy um, more in, in different games, but um, I start with a knight move. Green does the same. Uh, Fianchetto. Here's that queen out that we were talking about. Um, you know, like I was saying, in my games, I when my king, queen comes out, I get attacked. I could have uh, played some other moves to attack the queen and kind of give blue some hassle. Maybe this square is is safe uh, overall, at least in this particular setup. But uh, that's what we're seeing. Uh, we were the the streamers were as confused by that move as I was. I was thinking, okay, what's what's going on? Is blue going for some sort of team tactic with green? What's going on? Anyway, um, I uh, decided that this is going to be a pawn push game. Um, I'll try and get my pawn up there. Don't want to go too fast. Don't want to develop too early. But, um, you know, that was going to be a, a goal of mine. So then we see some more development by the players. This bishop here uh, gets me scared. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see I spent 11 seconds on my next move trying to just make sure that I was safe along this diagonal. Um, I think with the knight here, I'm, I'm pretty safe. With the bishop and the queen protecting, of course, the square is, is safe as well. Um, but this is an idea that might come back later in the game. So, more development. Blue's intending to Fianchetto. I've got to watch this pawn. That's something that I often forget. Um, the knight here defends that. Also gives me an opportunity to bring the bishop out and uh, be looking at green's queen through the knight. Um, green defends against that. Red castles. Uh, and here's the first time that I'm going to show a clip from the stream. Let's see what our folks have to say about castling. Yeah, fiend right. shadows are good. Castling is bad. Really? That's what I was taught. Yeah, castling really? is bad in, in most modes. Yes. Um, okay, so there, we, there, there you have <laughs> so, it. So, yeah. Um, and that's something that I've heard as well. Uh, castling in four-player chess, if you do it early in the game, uh, you're going to get punished. Um, it's still a strategy, you know, as many times as you can hear somebody say something, you kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Um, so we'll see we'll see that, how that goes. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with castling. But I guess the, the traditional thinking is that with the king over here, it's a lot easier for green to attack, whereas in two-player chess, 
you know, it's it's uh, opposed. Um, so castling, you know, gets it away from the center of the board where most of the pieces are. In four-player chess, castling just brings your king closer to an enemy, um, which you don't want. So that's the thinking. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Blue develops a knight. I develop a bishop. Again, this idea that I was th talking about, this square is no longer as sensitive with a move like this from green um, with the bishop, of course, over here. So more development. Uh, green right away takes advantage of the castling, says, okay, well, what, what can I do to break down um, your king side over here? Uh, pawn push by Eric Rosen. Blue pushes a pawn. I reinforce the center. Um, you know, these two pawns, I always ask myself internally, okay, is my bishop going to be under attack? Am I getting something along this diagonal? Same thing with this diagonal for the, the other bishop. Um, but with a pawn here, I figured this bishop was safe for now. This diagonal was safe, except for the queen thread along here. But again, I still have plenty of defense there. Uh, so we see that. More developing, more developing moves. I hope someday to be able to give you guys better commentary than what I'm giving now. Uh, but these were the moves that happened. All right, and here I decided, well, if Eric did it, I can do it too. Um, I wasn't too scared about these, uh, the pressure from the, the blues king side, um, as maybe I should have been, but I'm still learning. Cut me some slack at Castle, and I know in, in the chat afterwards I got a lot of hassle from from the, the players who were spectating um, about, you know, <laughs> they thought I was a good player. I'm not. Uh, let's see what the streamers say about my castle. You just take back, actually. It's not, oh, another guy who castled. Okay. So, yeah. Taking notice right away that I castled. Um, yeah, trying to figure out what's what's going on. Um, so then some sort of uh, relocating of green's pieces towards towards the, the king over here in the corner. Red steps aside, um, trying to avoid checks, I guess. Uh, blue, this move by the knight scared me a little bit. Having just castled, I was thinking, okay, well, we have blue here, um, you know, could open up my king side if I, if I didn't want to capture that. We have bishops coming in, we have queens coming in all over the place. Um, so, made me a little bit nervous. Uh, I stepped aside, just as Eric did, actually. Not that I was playing copycat, but I stepped aside. A, to get out of the check here, and B, so that I could open up here attacking the bishop and also uh, providing some defense uh, with my knight, realizing, yeah, that I'm not in a good situation having my king over here. So a mistake on my part. Uh, Green's king comes out, and yeah, this attack is looking uh, scary if you're red. Um, they were... Eric was not too thrilled about it either. Here's what they said. Hey, uh, you guys, Eric is not fine here. <laughs> this is not fine. I'm not feeling comfortable. Yeah. But I don't know how you're actually gonna mate me. Me neither, but I'll, I'm I'll scared. figure it out. I'll figure it out. So yeah, some some threats here. Not really, you know, everyone's so inexperienced here uh, that it's, it looks menacing. I'm sure a higher rate of player would have, would have a mate in three lined up here, but uh, High-rated players, we were not, so instead it's just kind of a, a um, you know, a position that looks menacing. Red steps aside with the rook, uh, perhaps getting ready to push a central pawn. Blue makes a bishop move, and to me, that's looking good as if, you know, I don't have to worry about this bishop too much longer because blue's going to be targeting uh, the red bishop. Um, I decide to bring the, the knight in, which uh, baffled the, the two international masters. Um, Eric was, I, I suppose, looking for some help. You know, he's feeling under attack from blue, looking uh, at, at a green queen attack, um, maybe a rook, you know, all these sorts of things. And a move like this, I guess, is, is uh, looks passive, but to, in my mind, you know, blue is going to attack if I didn't do anything about it. So that was my reasoning there. Um, here was their reaction. And what is yellow? What, yellow is just like ultimate chilling. Yes. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah. Ultimate chilling are the words that, that were used. All right. So then uh, we see this opening up a, a bishop attack, um, you know, both ways there. 
red pushes a pawn, blue takes it. Um, and at this point, uh, that pawn was defended by a bishop, by a rook, by a knight. Um, and yeah, I guess, um, you know, the, the threat in, when I was looking at this, the threat that I was anticipating is that, um, green will give a check, right? It seems pretty clear cut to me that, you know, green's going for a check. They did, uh, green didn't see that move, by the way. Um, green was thinking about, uh, taking here. In fact, um, he's saying I'll take it. Actually, my first game. Oh dear. So that was the bishop. Uh -oh. move. No, but but actually now, uh, I will just take that. That that was not a good move. Losing a bishop for my knight is not smart from blue. So yeah, he's okay. obviously missing the tactic tactic of bishop takes bishop, uh, forcing this move, and then you know maybe a knight move for for checkmate. Um, so he's missing that tactic. I was not missing it. I, of course, wasn't listening to the stream, so I had no idea that he was just anticipating to capture there. I figured at this point I need to do something to distract green, otherwise red is going to go downhill and I'll be at the mercy of blue and green. So my move was a knight move out. Of course, that's an undefended piece. Of course, it can be captured um, in, in two ways by green, and it worked. Um, not understanding what was going on here, the streamer's reaction was... Oh, what is... what? 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 That's a horrible move. I just take... Yes, yeah, just confusion. Yeah. So then uh, we see uh, green takes my knight, which is fine. Um, you know, blue at this point is probably pounding his face against his computer screen saying, why didn't you take... we had, we had a mate into lined up. Um, so I, I captured, or I sacrificed a knight to make sure that uh, red could stay in the game. Um, what transpires after that? Red captures the bishop. Uh, of course, green could trade, uh, but it's defended well enough that, um, that he's not losing the bishop, or not losing the knight for bishop trade. Uh, blue looks to restabilize. I threaten the queen. Um, I should have also mentioned here that that's a threat against the knight uh, that was that was hanging here. Um, so by threatening the queen, even if green retreats, which he will, there's, that's a spoiler. Even if green retreats, uh, that knight can still be captured. Uh, here's here's the reaction. That was an annoying move by yellow. That actually was that was a solid move. Oh. I didn't even realize I'm attacking your knight twice. Uh, me neither, until just now. Like, until about a second ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, oops. Okay. So go here again. Yeah, so that's the move. Uh, Red, of course, as we said, captures the, the Hanging Knight. Um, then Blue takes a pawn, saying, okay, now will you capture, um, capture the, the bishop there? Which... Green does. I, I was looking. Um, it's not a mate threat, so, you know, ideas of this or this, uh, not in the picture yet. If it was a mate threat, I would have gladly captured one of those green green pieces or even, well, can't do much against blue at this point, but um, that would be the, the idea there. Um, uh, green, of course, this time sees the tactic. I push my pawn, seeing that there's nothing I can do to help. So green takes the bishop. Of course, that means that not only did uh, red lose the pawn, but he's also lo losing a rook. Uh, red captures, loses the rook. Now it's my turn. I step aside with my bishop. Um, pushing here is under attack by, by green's queen, so I want to make sure I'm supporting that pawn. This is a good move, I guess, kind of looking this way um, as well, but also uh, most importantly, making clearance so that my queen can supervise this pawn. Um, let's see what else happens. Green pushes a pawn. Uh, I'm not sure what the threat is there. Maybe it's not a threat, maybe it's just a move. Red goes up with the rook. Uh, bishop captures. I push my pawn, now that it's safe. Uh, green pushes his pawn, attacking my bishop. Here I could have been attacked by blue. Um, although it's it's somewhat of a of a locked defense over here, you know, blue hasn't 
doesn't have any threats lined up against me, so I'm not too worried about um, that. Of course, a threat with a queen or something, I would I would gladly take the queen and trade off a bishop. Um, what does red do? Red takes the free pawn there, um, defended twice, attacked twice, might as well. Um, they're going to avoid the trade there, as we'll see in a few minutes. Blue steps over, I set back. Uh, green steps over with the rook, um, not wanting to lose it uh, on that square and not wanting to trade it, um, wants to hang on to the rook. Um, taking a brief pause to look at the time, pretty much equal, green is ahead on the clock by more than a minute. Um, sorry, did I say green? Blue is ahead on the clock by more than a minute. We'll see what he does with, with that time um, as, as the game continues. Uh, red steps out with the bishop looking at the queen, protecting a, uh, a knight. Um, blue moves, moves the queen. Now, how many of you saw this, right? I'm sure um, people in the spectator chat were, were saying, what is going on with, with the, uh, the queen there? Um, you know, I could have taken it. Let's see, uh, let's see what <laughs> the reaction to that move was from our, our international master friends. Uh, he hung his queen. That's just a one move take. Bishop takes queen. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I would have seen that. Okay. Well, like, you've board, board vision is yeah, so, I, so difficult in this game. I didn't see it either. Um, yeah, there. Eric's just saying, you know, it's it's okay for somebody who's new at this, which I I definitely am. Um, you know, it's. I don't want to make excuses. I, I should have seen it. There's no way I shouldn't have seen it. Um, but uh, in my mind, this was a threat against uh, a mate threat there. Um, but uh, not a mate threat, but an attack threat here for later on. Um, I should have taken the queen. Uh, but it's, it's hard to see. So uh, moving on. Uh, green moves a knight. Red moves a knight. Um, hanging the rook there. We'll see. Um, we'll see what what happens there. Um, blue takes the bishop. Uh, at this point, they're talking about the the points. Uh, they're saying, uh, "What's going on?" Yeah. So they're talking about the points, and I'm starting to notice it here too that we have zero points versus 13, versus 14, versus 8. Um, and, you know, standard chess uh, versus variance, whatever, I know that you need to start gaining points, um, and ha having zero points as you're going towards an endgame is not, not a good idea. So we continue. Pawn steps out. I just want to be extra extra protective of my king side here. I want to be able to move my knight out. I want to be able to, to um, have, some, have some guaranteed protection there. So that's what I do. Uh, green does not take the free rook. So after all that, uh, after all that discussion about, oh, you you miss the bishop takes uh, bishop takes queen, right? You got to see that. You got to see that. Well, here uh, there's a free rook, and and red missed it. So board vision, as Eric said, is definitely something that um, not everyone has, especially for for four player chess, especially when you're just starting out. It's got to be something that you earn through practice. Um, here's the here's the reaction to the fact that the rook wasn't captured. Beat everyone. Wait, also, what? I could have just taken your rook yeah, for thanks free. Yeah, for not taking my rook. Oh for my free. god, I could have just taken your rook. <laughs> yeah, my, my my move was like I, I played my knight move trying to attack the queen. I forgot. All right. So we continue. Um, they obviously see that that was an option. Move the the knight back out. Blue pushes. Um, I could have captured here, but I didn't want to open up, um, you know, from, for checks. So instead of capturing, I step back. Um, now uh, we have knight captures rook instead of queen captures a free rook. It's knight captures a rook with a trade. Recapture. Um, we can see a trade there. Queen comes back out again, looking over the square. I promote now that I can. Before, there was a knight uh, somewhere here guarding that square. So um, now I can promote. I do. They trade queens. Uh, a check 
on red, and I step back, threatening a pawn, threatening a pawn. Um, green pushes a pawn. Uh, at this time, it was at this point it was a, a time game. Uh, you can see green's already running low, so it's it's a lot of pre moves, a lot of uh, quick moves. Blue defends the, the pawn there. I take the free pawn. We move the rook back. Some knight shuffling around. Um, it was interesting at this point. Uh, one of the spectators in the Twitch chat for Gotham Chess pointed out um, that if you click on my name, you see uh, some some interesting stats when it comes to variant play. Um, so I think it was about here that we had this. I have a bad feeling blue is going to win. Apparently, Gravel is. Wow. The guy playing with the yellow pieces is like 2,500 in variance of four player, Ooh. which is kind of nuts. And didn't spot the free queen. <laughs> yep, I didn't spot the free queen. Okay. We get it. Um, yeah. So th they, that was pointed out. I will make a note here. It's Grable. Grable. All right. <laughs> Uh, I've heard it pronounced, mispronounced a couple times. Um, not that I'm sensitive about that sort of thing, but in case anyone out there is curious about how to pronounce it. Uh, so what do I do? I bring up a queen. Uh, again, pre-moves, moving quick. Uh, I also wanted to defend this pawn so that this queen was free to take there. Uh, we see some quick moves. I take the free pawn. Uh, we defend a pawn over here. Now we're starting to get serious about attack an attack by blue. I'm nervous about that, so I bring bring the queen queen back as defense. Uh, tray of pawns. I take a free pawn. Again, this is all um, you know. Blue had time. I don't know why he's going so quickly here, but um, we were all playing really quick. Maybe blue wanted to put some time pressure on the rest of us, but uh, it was a lot of pre moves, a lot of quick moves. So don't get the wrong idea about. Um, our skills when it comes to, to playing quickly. All right, so here's an interesting tactic. With the queen here, uh, what did I do? Stepping backwards a few moves. Uh, I immediately saw this threat. I'd been paying attention to it the entire game. I said, okay, well, I'd rather have a, a knight for bishop trade than get mated. Um, so I brought the bishop out to, de to defend. Um, probably better was, I don't know, maybe, maybe pushing the, the pawn up. We'll see. Um... Some moves by the other players. Blue goes for this trade anyway. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess he was thinking I capture um, and then that. But the thing is, this is not a capture with check. So I'm not compelled to take that right away. Um, and even with 30 seconds left, I saw that this was a check. So I took it. Actually, had it not been for this queen, that would have been mate. Um, but blue will, of course, be forced to, to go here. Um, again, my bishop protects this, protects this square. I was just thinking, hey, maybe I can get uh, two rooks for the queen. That's that's a good trade in, in uh, by most measures. Um, if it's a one-point queen, it's even better. So we did that. Uh, green, I guess, is maybe getting ready to attack. He could have taken this. Um, he knows that I'm, I'm going to be capturing here afterwards, but he's down to 13 seconds. So, um, yeah, so we have the queen come over. I take the queen, of course. We see some uh, moves being rattled off. Um, I capture the knight. And here they're talking about how is this game going to finish up. Even with 5.6 seconds, they thought that they were um, leading this game maybe blue. Uh, we'll see what they have to say about me and my chances of winning. Isn't yellow promoting? Yes, but yellow is also losing all his pieces because he's exceptionally talented. Um, I have a really bad feeling that you're just going to... Yeah, so uh, I was no threat. I Yeah, they were seeing that I have a chance of promoting later on in the game, but, you know, at this point it doesn't matter. It's a time scramble. you gotta you got to do what you can and look for mates um, and, and get as many points as you can. So, yeah, another quick jab about the fact that I missed. Bishop takes queen. I know, I know, I'm never going to hear the end of it, uh, but, you know, that's what it was. Quick moves, quick moves. I'm going through these quickly because that's how much time we had for them in the game. Um, yeah, this, talking about, talk about missing moves, this was not a good one. 
Blue, of course, being uh, rated right 1900, sees that my queen is hanging um, with the quick moves that were happening. Red promoted, not realizing that I would have a, a pawn there to recapture, um, which I do. Your green's getting ready to promote. Blue's attacking red. I promote. Um, it is with check. You know, time scramble, not like I was paying attention to that being with check anyway, uh, because it's usually not a great idea to, um, you know, check your opposite. So that's what's happening. I was seeing a free pawn there. Um, I was seeing, yeah, uh, I was seeing opportunities to go after green here, go after the king here. Um, bishop for bishop trade. Green, oh, free bishop, excuse me, free bishop. Uh, King is running away trying to look for safety. Uh, blue promotes, could be captured. Uh, I give check to green. Bishop comes back um, instead of capturing with, with the time pressure uh, pawn push, which is captured. Uh, now green's going for a mate on red. Red steps in. Much better would have been to run away, but red steps in. Uh, we have a queen capture. I step up. At this point, I'm looking for uh, a mate on red. It's not generally good practice to again attack your opposite, especially when there are three other when there are three players besides yourself remaining. Um, but that's exactly what happened. Uh, I knew that he was getting mated, uh, if not by green, then by blue. So I was going to take those points. Uh, blue lo loses on time here, so blue is now dead on time. I grabbed a free mate. Really? Oh, and double oh, check. No, because then I then I move my king. Oh, he's gonna flag. He flagged. Yes. Wait, my I, my king got mated. Oh, you got mated. Oh no. my god, wait. Yeah, my king got mated. Yes, yes, it did. I'm so sorry about that. Um, we see more quick moves. At this point, I knew uh, that I needed just a few more points to claim the win. So I was looking to get a mate on blue, at which point I could claim, and that's what I did, opening up uh, the bishop here. Uh, that's check, and that's mate. So I took that, and uh, one removed my green, and I claimed the win. So uh, there are the final standings. Good game. Um, interesting to play against uh, strong chess players, but... Um, not anyone who has any more experience than me with standard chess. So it was interesting, uh, of course, to have an audience and to have um, have a Twitch broadcast where they're, they're giving commentary, trying to figure it out at the same time I am was, was fun too. So anyway, that's what I've got for you today. Um, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get more back to live chess uh, next week. Um, we are transitioning slowly here to standard. Uh, but, uh, of, of course, as always, I appreciate you watching, um, and we'll see you guys in the video next week.